Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much uh, for the invitation. invitation. Um, finally, I made my goal to visit Vienna. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be here for an interview four years ago, but the COVID postponed everything. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the dynamics of the multi soliton to klein golden equations. Uh, this is a drawing, old drawing work with Yasek. I was so distracted by my teaching, so I can only talk about old work. Um, I hope Kenji will talk, talk about more update work uh, recently, uh, next week. All right, so this kind of, you will serve as some, kind of serve like, like an introductory part to Kenji's talk next week. All right, so the model we consider will be the po power type klein golden equation. Uh, we will, later on, we will focus on 3D with cubic power because all the analysis work uh, um, uh, perfectly for, for different dimension, for dimension higher than three, we need to be a little bit careful with uh, straight cut estimate and uh, the gap spectrum problem. Anyway, uh, power type uh, Klein Gordon with focusing on linearity, then the first things we would like to do to, elim to eliminate the time, de time dependence to find stationary solutions. Okay, we can find solutions to the elliptic equation um, at least a unique one, which is radio positive, which is called a ground state. We found, uh, we found, uh, we found this ground state by a melting pass argument, uh, which minimizes uh, the ground state minimizes this energy. Uh, so since the equation, since the problem, since, since the ground state is found by melting pass argument, we naturally expect uh, it has some unstable directions. Okay, this is uh, based, if I try to linearize the equation around the ground state, here is uh, we have some spectrum information. Um, this operator coming from the linearization will have one negative eigenvalue, and uh, due to the symmetry of the equation, you will also have some zero modes. Um, uh, these zero modes are caused by uh, a translation um, symmetry. Just differentiate the uh, the ground state. We found we found this this um, zero modes. Okay, so this is the linear linear level information. So uh, for this wave type equation, after I obtain, uh, we have some symmetry. Um, space-time symmetry, I can translate in space, I can translate in time. I can also, more importantly, I can roll on the transform everything. Um, this is just uh, a detailed uh, expressions for the round, for the round transform. Uh, we don't need to worry about this, uh, these details at this moment. Just says that uh, if, uh, uh, if I have a solution to, if I have a solution to the, to the Klein-Gordon equation, I can apply Laurent transformation. It's a space-time rotation, and uh, I obtain the, the, the after the Laurent transform, I obtain the the, the, the the solution is still a is still a solution to the Klein-Gordon equation. All right. So what 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 do we want to do? Um. Uh, so the, the, just the um. In early days, uh, by and the Sedinger, they consider the dynamics below the ground state. Uh, if the solution has energy below the ground state, then there's a dichotomy phenomenon. Either the solution exists globally or it blows up in finite time. Um, then later on, uh, by Ibrahim Masmudi and Nakanishi, they use the, this Kenny Gamero roadmap uh, to uh, concentration competitiveness. Uh, to show those solutions which globally exist in actually scatters, uh, which means asymptotically it behaves like free solutions. Um, later on, Nak Nakanishi and Schlag, they, um, they studied the solution slightly above the ground state, and uh, they classified um, the behavior of the solution around ground, uh, a uh, uh, slightly with energy slightly above the ground state, um, the ground state Q will play the role um, of the center manifold. Then the stable, the unstable direction, um, one side give you blob, the other side give you um, 
we have this Q play the road like center manifold. It's a code, there's a co dimension one structure going to this direction, you uh, we blob, and then the other direction is scatter um, uh, to the free wave. Okay, so our goal is to um, to understand this kind of this kind of this kind of this, uh, to understand this theory around uh, multi soliton, which is a superposition of a uh, finitely number finite number of Laurent transform solitons. They will move with different speed. So uh, yeah, that's our goal. Um, okay, so let me talk about the multi soliton. So here we don't have um. We don't have uh, the integrable structure. So when I talk about multi soliton and the the superposition of uh this traveling uh this traveling wave, it will not be a solution uh to the Klein Gordon equation. Um, but people can one can find solutions uh to the Klein Gordon equation, which asymptotically behave like the sum. Of this traveling wave, so um, I just put a uh, uh, few names here. Um, this uh, they can be constructed by the classical weak uh, weak convergence argument. I will talk about this uh, later on again. All right, one can construct a, a solution which behave asymptotically like the sum of this traveling wave. We would like to understand the solution. Um, Close to this structure, it's not a solution to the uh, to the to, to the nonlinear Klein Gordon equation, but we can still try to understand uh, the dynamics around this structure. All right, um, what uh, what uh, um, motivated by the soliton resolution things, and uh, um, um, we we would like to study. Uh, I mean, for soliton resolution. We would like to, people would like to show generically as time goes to infinity, the solution resolve into uh, finitely many solitons plus a radiation term. But this, for Klein Gordon equation, these subcritical equations uh, without integrability structure, it seems to be quite hard. So we, we, we try to solve problems step by step. So in, in our work, we show the conditional. Con uh, um, asymptotic stability of motor soliton and construct the, uh, the center stable manifold around a multi soliton structure. And uh, we also try to uh, derive more refined information about so called pure multi soliton. I will, I will talk about this um, um, in more details later on. What I mean by a pure multi soliton and uh, derive. Um, uh, for example, the conversion rate and the decay rate, these kind of things. Uh, yeah. Right. Please stop me if uh, it's become uh, very not under control. Anyway, so um, literature, uh, of course, all, all of these are far from being uh, uh, complete. Uh, just let me briefly say uh, the stability study of solitons has a long history. Um, uh, uh, there are typically two notations. One is the orbital stability, um, which means if I perturb the solution a little bit, then the solution stay close to the family of the soliton. Uh, so I mentioned the work by Weinstein. Um, Asymptotic stability is uh, a stronger notation. It, it says that uh, in, in the solution does not only stay uh, the, the Ayrton uh, does not uh, the, uh, also, the Ayrton uh, stays small, and uh, but it also scatter. Uh, not only stay small, but it in fact uh, scatter. So for in this direction, I just mentioned some work by. So for Weinstein, Pajiano, Kukania, Krieger, Schlag, Nakanish, Schlag, Perimon, Ronian, Schlag, Schlag, himself, and he has a long history. Um, okay, so so the, the point is that the stability problem near one soliton has been uh, studied extensively. Um, our goal is to st to study the multi-soliton setting. Uh, in this problem, in this problem. Um, 
for Schrodinger po uh, for Schrodinger problem uh, in early days by Perelman and Ronnie Ashley Schlagsoffer, um, they use point wise decay to study stability uh, in this L two intersection with L L one uh, topology that we know that uh, the H one I mean L one topology is not a, a great topology for uh, for for these kind of problems. Okay, so. We would like to study this kind of we would like to study stability in some more natural spaces like energy space. Uh, so he he then one need to use some appropriate strict estimate um, uh, for the study uh, for the for the stability near one single soliton. Uh, I refer to the work by Marius Bajano and uh, uh, Nakanishi Schlag. Um, uh, uh, this is for Bojano for shorting uh, Kenji, uh, Kenji and uh, Schlag for this um, Klein Gordon and the uh, Schrodinger for one single soliton. All right, then, uh, then people can also use uh, an energy uh, virial type argument, energy and modulation method to study to study uh, stability of KDV type problems. Um, I just briefly refer to Mero Mateo, Mero Mateo Chai. They they use spatial. Uh, uh, I mean, they use some fascinating, fascinating uh, monotonicity formulas to study the the decay, the stability of uh, soliton and the multi soliton in the soliton region. Uh, this um, this monotonicity formulas uh, they are always miracle to me, and uh, uh, I'm not sure how to apply them in the wave setting. So instead of a uh, virial type argument, we uh, we use a uh, strict cut estimate. Uh, all right, let me continue to uh, talk about the, lit the literature. So, uh, um, who can, so as I mentioned, people can construct solution. The, the sound of the this traveling wave will not be a solution uh, to to uh, to the original uh, nonlinear equation. But people can construct those uh, construct solutions which asymptotically behave like the sum of this traveling wave. The, these kind of solutions are called pure multi-soliton. Uh, so for Klein Gordon, I just uh, here just mentioned, I refer to the police three papers on um, Klein Gordon and the reference in these three papers. Okay, the typical <laughs> argument is that we uh, we would like to we would like to construct a solution which as t goes to infinity, behave like the sum of these sol uh, as the sum of these solitons. Then people pick, pick a sequence of time goes to infinity, and uh, construct a solution, which is the sum which which equals the sum of these solitons at at each of these time. And uh, by doing this, we construct a sequence of solutions, and we then people derive some uniform estimate, then pass. Uh, this uh, use some weak convergence to pass uh, this to the limit, and uh, this limit will be a so solution to the nonlinear equation, which actually, which uh, which behave uh, like the sum of these uh, solitons as as time goes to infinity. But we all know that when we pass to when we apply weak convergence, we lose information. We lose, for example, uh, uniqueness. We we lose some information about smoothness, these kind of things. Uh, so we also then after the construction of the pure soliton, pure multi solitons, we always need to involve. Uh, we always need to uh, need to need to use some refine information of the equation uh, to to recover. Uh, for example. Uh, the uniqueness or yeah. So um, he, here for KDV type equations, uh, I would also like to refer to uh, the work of Martel and uh, Corbett. Um, they use monotonicity formulas again. Um, um, few a few years ago, by Cot and his uh, students, uh, they also try to recover some information about this pure multi soliton. Uh, they they assume certain things. For example, they assume the solution. Converge to this sum of multi sum of solitons 
algebraically uh, has some decay power, decay in T in terms of in the algebraic decay, algebraic decay uh, in T, they, they, then they can recover some uniqueness uh, for, I think, for, for, for Schrodinger and the Klein Gordon equations. Um, some years ago, with Yasek, we, we studied 1D problems. Uh, we, we, as, we, as, we could do this classification uh, for uh, kink, kinks, uh, this multi-kink structure. Um, uh, but uh, in this setting, we assume the, so, uh, uh, the, pure mo the solution converge to the sum of kink, kink this, this structure exponentially in time then we saw the uniqueness uh, in this class. Uh, but um, uh, actually, actually, the exponential decay assumption is not, is not, that, uh, is not that strong because uh, we can imagine that uh, solitons decays exponentially in time, uh, sorry, if exponentially in space, if they have different speed, the interaction among them will be exponential in time because the separation among them is of all the T. Um, the, soli the solitons, they decay exponentially in time. So the distance between them is of all the T. So the, decay, the air turn decays should be exponentially in time. But anyway, uh, in, uh, in our current setting, we'll, uh, we, will, we will not assume anything uh, then we we will not assume any decay rate and we recover some refined information. I will show you the result very soon. Okay, so uh, let me try to continue to, then let me try to set up the, uh, let's set up some notations then show you the main result. So we, we would like to consider the, uh, the equation as a dynamical system, then I put the, the, phase, the, the phase space for this dynamical system will be uh, this H1 cross L2, and uh, I write uh, the solution as a vector. The first component is the solution. The uh, second component is the time derivative. Then we can, uh, we can write the original equation as a dynamical system, and uh, the symplectic structure is given by this J. Okay, so um, I would also like to put the soliton into this setting. Uh, we have the Lorentz transform uh, ground state, and uh, putting this into this vector setting, this uh, these are the formula. I would also like to put the multi-soliton structure into this. Um, uh, I would also like to put the multi-soliton structure into this Hamiltonian structure. Then I just uh, put this uh, vector uh, solitons together. Then we consider the stability of. I mean, we consider the, uh, the stability or dynamics around around this. Now I need to, uh, I need to have some uh, separation assumptions. We would like to avoid collisions. Collisions might be quite complicated uh, in, the, in this problem. Um, maybe two soliton will merge to one soliton and uh, radiate large energy. Um, so, uh, this is a possibility. So collision will be a very complicated problem. Uh, we try to avoid uh, collision at this moment. Uh, so we assume certain separation condition. This condition is technical, but the idea is that solitons move away from each other. That's it. Uh, this is just, uh, just technical way to write down this. Um, yeah. So with these separation conditions, now I can try to show you some results. The first result is uh, we assume orbital stability, then we derive uh, the stronger the asymptotic stability. We assume that if we have a solution stays close to the multi-soliton family, uh, yeah, this is just orbital stability statement. We assume we have orbital stability, the solution stay close to the multi-soliton family, then actually it has, we can derive more refined information about the, the, the solution. The solution actually uh, actually scattered to uh, some <coughs> it, it scattered to the multi-soliton fam family, which means um, the air term um, actually scattered to the free uh, to a free solution. 
and uh, we uh, there are some refined information about the trajectory of the soliton along this multi soliton family. For example, beta, um, the beta, the, we can we can find the fixed periodic parameter. We can the the trajectory, the 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 velocity of the trajectory converge converge to to um. Uh, converge to this uh round effect uh, this vel uh, I mean this velocity uh, I mean this round parameter, um the the behavior uh, this is the only information we can obtain, uh we can only say that the velocity converge to the round parameter the the solution itself might have very comp I mean the trajectory itself might have a quite complicated behavior, uh in the energy space. Let me don't put things so technical. All right, so this is from orbital stability to the asymptotic stability. Then I would like to tell you a little bit more about pure multisoliton. So our notation of pure multisoliton means that uh, we can find some trajectory such that uh, the solution goes to the sum of solitons as t goes to infinity. I just assume we just assume that the solution goes to the sum of multi -sol the sum of solitons. Then what can we say? We can say much more. Actually, the, the, the we only assume it goes to it goes to zero. The in refined information is that uh, you see here I don't assume any decay rate. I don't assume any behavior of the center here. But we can show that um, the solution actually converges exponentially, and uh, the center behave linearly. So I, we more or less assume only goes to zero at the beginning. Then we derive more information. Um, this um, I have an, an, I try to naively compare this with some elliptic common sense, uh, one which. When we try to show the existence of the solution, we always just use some very rough um, 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 competitiveness argument. We, so we pass to the limit saying that the solution exists. Okay, then we use the, the solution, I uh, use the structure of the equation to derive more information. For example, the, the solution to an elliptic problem decays exponentially. Uh, yeah, so, and uh, it's smooth in some sense. Here, um, we only de we only roll down this decay exponentially, but um, actually we can I think we can prove much more. For example, the solution decays exponentially away from the center of this the center of this um, uh, <coughs> these solitons and. Uh, um, uh, actually, is through enjoying some smoothness, but uh, we did uh, we didn't put things to be so technical. Uh, yeah, so I just uh, uh, yeah, so, so I just want to mention that it's it, it's possible to obtain the spatial ways. Uh, um, we actually did this uh, in our kink kink network paper, and I think uh, in some in a different setting. Uh, the exponential weight estimate is of, of is of great interest. Uh, Kenji will talk about this next week. All right. So yeah, this is uh, uh, assuming no decay rate, we derive more information. Then the next question is: Can we classify uh, all the possibility with the I mean, we classify the solution which converge to uh, the the sum the given sum of of uh, this traveling wave, our result is that <coughs> uh, when we after we specified the information of this uh, sum of solitons, for example, here we uh, we uh, the the Lorentz parameters are given, the center are given, then. Then the, sol then the solution which converge to this as time goes to infinity, they actually form a manifold of n dimension. This n is the this the n is the number of solitons here. This result is natural because uh, 
we have stable, stable and the answer we have once for each soliton, for each soliton we have one stable okay. direction. Uh, for each soliton we have one stable direction, so um, it's natural to expect uh, the whole family will be uh, a manifold of n dimension. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is the classification result. Uh, the next uh, the next few uh, next few slides will be techn very technical, so bear with me. But the Lord, what we want to do is to construct us, uh, please. Uh, it's uh, it's unique up to this n dimension manifold. Uh, we have uh, uh, due to this unstable direction, we naturally expect some non uniqueness, but this non uniqueness, non -uniqueness can be classified by this manifold. But just like. Uh, what, what, uh, let me see if, oh sorry, let me see if I not understand the problem. I guess the problem is that we are given a sum of, um, a sum of solitons and the, all the parameters are fixed. Can we find a unique solution converged to this? Uh, my, uh, our solution, uh, our answer is that um, the, we don't have a uniqueness, but it's not unique up to this uh, dimension n manifold. Uh, I think so. Just uh, just put up along the stable direction. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we didn't write down the explicit example, but uh, due to this instability, um, yeah, just uh, due to this exponential instability. Um, uh, yeah, so so the non uniqueness is due to the in unstable direction. Uh, unstable direction. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, so uh, the next few slides will be a little bit technical, but uh, the results are more or less natural. So uh, let me introduce uh, some other notations. Um, uh, these are zero modes. Uh, these are zero modes and the stable, unstable modes. Uh, and I put them into these vectors. This vector set, uh, vector notation, and I also let them move uh, uh, in our problem. <coughs> in our problem, so <coughs> then with these notations, I would like to set up the center stable manifold. So the first step, uh, the first step is, um, yeah. So so let me don't. Uh, let, let me rem let me co let me consider the perturbation in a very high co dimension setting. I perturb I perturb the so uh, my perturbation is orthogonal to the unstable directions. This plus means the unstable direction, and let me also perturb uh, orthogonal to the zero modes. Then I can construct. Uh, then we can construct. Um, then we can construct a graph uh, in the on the unstable direction, um, such that the solution, the per, if the initial data is given by the so uh, the initial data is given by the the solid multi soliton plus an air term, this air term is orthogonal to the unstable direction and the zero modes. The uh, unstable things is given by uh, is given by a function here. Then we can show uh, then we can show this solution actually scattered to multi soliton family. It's it's quite similar. Uh, the, the statement is the, uh, more or less the same as one single soliton setting. It's also the same as the classical um, unstable manifold. Uh, I mean stable center stable manifold construction in ODE. Uh, the unstable direction is uh, is a gr the unstable the, the, the center stable manifold is a, a graph over uh, is a graph over the stable direction. 
Okay, so yeah, so we 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 first construct a very high co dimension uh, center center uh, center stable direction, but this co dimension is too high. Uh, it's not it's not a less, uh, it's it's not it's not a natural expectation uh, because we uh, for each soliton we only have one unstable direction. So the natural expectation is co dimension n. Then how to what what the problem is? The problem is my perturbation. The initially I pick the perturbation is also orthogonal to the zero modes. In principle, we can we only need to orthogonal to the orthogonal to the unstable modes. Then we can apply the symmetry, the round symmetry, or the or translation, all this symmetry to gain the 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 six the six n dimension back. So we, the second step is uh, we can construct the multi the center stable manifold around uh, uh, around uh, around a neighborhood of this uh, this multi soliton. Okay, so this is then we have a local co dimension n local co dimension n construction of the center stable manifold. But it's not uh, it's not the end of story yet. Um, now we can now we we'll, with this local construction we can start to use um, local chart or this kind of uh, standard uh, standard techniques. We can patch everything together. The final the final result is the following: given a, fin a finite a natural number n, and uh, we can construct a center stable manifold of co dimension n. For the multi soliton family, it's a center stable manifold for the family. All right. So this is a construction. Then, um, yeah. So we think we so we do we do a construction of the center manifold. Then the next question, the natural question is, what can we say when we go away from this center manifold? Then this is something Kenji will talk about next week. Um, it's much more involved because we have unstable direction, exponential unstable direction, and uh, for different soliton, uh, due to different traveling speed, you know the physics. Uh, physics uh, we have these twins paradox or something. Uh, if we travel at a different speed, then their age might be different. So this uh, we we can see these kind of things from the instability when two soliton traveled at a different speed. The exponential instability they are offer different weight, uh, different rate. Then from it's very easy to cook up some ODE example. If I, uh, if if I put up in the most unstable direction, it's easy. It's easy to screw up all of the unstable, less unstable directions. So to overcome this, one need to work very hard. Um, at least for me, I need to work very hard, and Kenji need to work very hard, and. Uh, I, I think he will talk about this next week. All right, so uh, I leave this for Kenji next week. So let me stay with uh, our center stable uh, manifold. Okay, what can I say for, uh, more about this center stable manifold? So the, it, I try to record the first statement I gave you was uh, if I have orbital stability, then, uh, then we have asymptotic stability. Asymptotic stability. The the final statement is that um, well, can we can uh, the the center manifold uh, can, uh, is characterized uh, or the orbital stability is characterized by the center manifold. This center manifold uh, so, uh, a so a a solution stay close to the family of the this multi soliton family uh, family if and only if it stay only center stable manifold. So, uh, this uh, I think this finished my uh, technical part of my talk. I think. Then let me start to talk uh, talk about. Uh, let me start. Uh, then let me start to talk about the linear theory. This one. This one. Yes. 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 Um, I I assume the separation at the beginning. Um, then, uh, due to the small perturbation, 
this separation will be preserved. Uh, I don't assume for all, all the time, but uh, under the small perturbation, uh, in the initial separation, it will stay there, it will stay separate. So let me talk about the linear theory behind, behind this. Um, as I mentioned, our goal is to, uh, uh, we would like to use straight cut estimate. Okay, then when well, I linearize the equation near the multi, uh, multi solid tone, I mean, uh, the sum of solid tone, this is a natural linear model. So the, poten uh, the pot uh, potential uh, is moving potential, and the, the Lorentz parameter is time dependent, the center is time dependent. Then, uh, from the view of modulation equation, uh, yeah, we have some conditions on this. Uh, is time-dependent time time dependent parameters. Okay, so uh, I would like to, we need to show a uh, strict cut estimate for this. Okay, so, uh, well, I, I guess I should not talk about this in front of experts. Uh, we have strict cut estimate, then this is a strict cut estimate I would like to apply in the client golden problem, uh, yeah. Um, well, we have strict cut estimate for the linear model. For the, uh, if I project uh, in, onto the, sta the stable the center stable direction, we have strict cut estimate and uh, um, the solution scatter uh, the solution the, 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 the solution on the center stable direction actually scattered to free wave. Okay, so this strict cut estimate is technical. Now I've indeed finished the technical part of my talk. Now I start to talk about something very soft. So I want to add. Uh, I want to say um, this problem is not. It's, it's, this problem. This linear theory is not. Is not so easy because um, when we try to when we try to study time dependent potential problems, we would what we would like to do. We would like to reduce. Uh, we would like to. Re Reduce this to the static problem. We apply the symmetry of the equation uh, to reduce the problem into static problem. Then, for static problem, we have a um, we have a good spectral theory. We can do spectral decomposition. Then we can show decay estimate on the uh, after we project onto the continuous spectrum. But here, um, uh, I mean, for multi solid for multi potentials. We my, the, the, the philosophy is that we would like to do this kind of reduction for each potential. Then I, then I start to patch them together. Let, uh, let, 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 that is the naive, the naive thought. Um, but uh, in this problem, um, it's, it, it's not so easy to apply naive Laurent transformation to make it static. Because the trajectory and the and the, these parameters they are time dependent. When I do Laurent transformation, um, this is the rotation in space time. Then the dependence here will be in a new coordinate will be space and time dependent. Then this cause um, it, it makes the problem very complicated. Okay, that, that's the one of the, the difficulty. We need to handle so in so he uh, instead of Laurent transformation, uh, we do this. Uh, uh, I don't know. I will talk about it. I will tell you why I got so confused. At this we do this Galilean transformation. This is a this is a naive simple model. I have a moving potential. Then for this proper problem, of course, we can do Laurent transformation to make uh, to make this V static. Then we start to run the, the standard the standard argument, but if this beta, this beta become time dependent, the trajectory the tra trajectory here become more complicated. It's not clear how to do this Laurent transformation anymore. Okay, so here here I put some difficulty here. We have some some negative eigenvalue equals some instability. Then when we try to handle that instability. We need to consider some problems with complicated right hand side. Okay, so uh, yeah. Um, also, um, uh, the time dependent trajectory when we do Laurent's, 
it will mix uh, space time uh, space time so the trajectory will become uh, very very complicated uh, okay so we we use this uh, naive Galilean transformation then the the operator the linear operator become a matrix operator uh, of course, maybe all of these are trivial for um, people more familiar with physics or uh, from the physical uh, physics department. But it, it was confusing to to me because um, for wave type equation, we always expect Lorentz invariance. We don't quite apply uh, Galilean things uh, in this setting. Anyway, so after I do this. Uh, after I do this change of uh, change of variable, I obtain a linear operator, and it turns out this linear operator has a uh, very good uh, spectral information. It's non-self. Uh, oh, oops. Uh, it's non-self. Uh, non-self the joint, but uh, we can overcome. All, but it can be uh, the spectral information can be it can be compute and uh, analyze uh, directly. Okay, let me quickly show you what can, what, what information I can I can say. Uh, for example, the continuous you know, the essential spectrum of the uh, I should not say continuous spectrum is essential spectrum. The essential spectrum of this linear operator is along the imaginary axis. There are some point spectrum along the real uh, along the real axis and the zero. Yes, one can. Um, also, the, the, the kernel here is a generalized kernel. It has an iterate uh, component. Um, yes, it's induced, uh, induced by this, the, the kernel of this uh, scalar operator. All of these can be computed explicitly. Okay, then with this spectral information, why can one can run the Hale Yoshida uh, and the, the deformation of the contour um, Laplace transformation? Laplace transform to derive uh, an expression for the evolution operator, just like the Schrodinger, Schrodinger setting, uh, for example, Erdogan schlag and uh, Krieger schlag um, uh, Yes, one can use this uh, um, uh, Hale Yoshida Laplace transformation to write down uh, the, uh, the, the evolution operator. In terms of resolvent, we could not do this with uh, spectral theory because uh, I mean, standard spectral theory because we don't have self adjoint operator anymore. But again, I mean, we can still we can still we can still write down the evolution in terms of its resolvent. Now the analysis is reduced to analyze the resolvent, and the re resolvent um, can be done. Uh, for I try to illustrate some idea. For example, the perturbed resolvent can be written as the resolvent for the free resolvent, and uh, I try to use the free the, the explicit formula for a free resolvent to tell you everything is, is possible. So this is the formula for the free resolvent. A free resolvent can be written as a uh, can be written uh, as a very nice structure as this. So. Um, this is the explicit computation by Fourier transform, all these kind of things. Um, the free resolver has this form. Uh, uh, yeah, the, there is a scalar resolver for this operator. Uh, for this operator, everything is explicit. In one D, I th in one D, I think uh, uh, Kopirova she she did this computation in 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 one D for different purpose. Uh, this uh, this hold uh, quite generally, um, uh, yeah, holds quite generally in different dimension. Anyway, uh, the resolvent can be written explicitly. Um, this oh oh, I think I miss I miss something here. H zero beta is the standard scale uh, standard scale. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a standard. Uh, it's a standard scalar Schrodinger operator. Uh, Sorry, I miss some, miss some notation. Okay, uh, the, the different the, the resolvent here is the standard resolvent with some phase conjugation. That, that's the only information. Anyway, um, the resolvent can be written explicitly 
and uh, we know the mapping property of the scalar standard resolvent. Then this uh, this phase conjugation will not change any will not change any uh, mapping property. Then I can I can do the mapping property uh, analysis component wise for the matrix uh, resolvent. Then the mapping property of the the this matrix resolvent follows uh, uh, from each component, and with the mapping property of the of the resolvent, then we can do standard things like limiting absorption principle, local energy decay, and uh, 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 and and then uh, and then strict cut estimate, and etc. All the linear as linear theory follows. Okay, so uh, yeah. Finally, I I start to put myself into uh, uh, awkward the position to say something about physics, which I don't know quite well. Uh, why I was so confused about Galilean and the Laurent. Uh, so naively, when we do this moving frame, we thought this uh, Galilean transformation. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, if we uh, if we have the uh, let's consider. Um, the standard answers for the plan, uh, for the solution to a wave equation, we uh, we we look into the planetary wave solution. It's an easy planetary wave. Then, um, uh, when we when we do then this is a, suppose this is a global solution. Uh, in brutal sense, uh, with solution to the wave to the wave equation, then uh. We want to apply Laurent transformation to it. Okay, then I Laurent transform. Oh, oops! I here actually I would like to write E. Uh, sorry about my confusing notation. Here I would like to write E to the list. Anyway, I apply Laurent transformation. Or oh, actually, what I want to say is I would like to delete this line. I would like to apply Laurent transformation. This is in one D. Uh, I apply Laurent transformation to this planar wave. The the resulting formula is this one. Okay, then I start to re uh, re uh, rearrange terms, put uh, put uh, put the resulting formula as uh, in the form of a planetary wave in the new coordinate. Then we then then we can see that uh this uh this frequency uh, this frequency variable and uh, the this uh. This frequency in time and this Fourier frequency, they also transform. Um, they also transform like X and T, like Laurent's. This uh, um, this is um, we can kind of tell this uh, uh, we can kind of tell this is kind of consistent with the resolving ex expression I show you a moment ago. Uh, if, for example, if I eliminate the time dependence here, uh, the frequency here will have additional, uh, uh, will have additional shift here. This shift in the Klein Gordon, in the Klein Gordon here, omega will be some uh, multiple of the Japanese k, and this is uh, very, these are very consistent with this phase conjugation here. Uh, yeah, so there's an additional phase shift here. Um, so since uh, we, we, uh, I'm in the Schrodinger Institute, I want to mention the wave mechanism uh, mechanics was uh, was developed by De Broglie and Schrodinger, and the one of the uh, oh, this is particle, not article. Sorry about my typo. Uh, typo. Uh, uh, these particles want to be, uh, we, uh, they want to describe the, the, the particle using this wave. So the Laurent invariance is very important. So here, uh, I've, uh, in order to, in, uh, in order to uh, make a, a particle uh, like a wave, this planar wave need to be Laurent invariant, and uh, we can compute this Laurent invariant. Now we can apply Laurent invariant and. Uh, we can see that the frequency and the, and the Fourier frequency just exactly be perform like I mean, uh, 
it's very consistent with Laurent transformation. So anyway, um, with this additional phase oscillation, additional oscillation, all these are very consistent with Laurent. But at the beginning, I thought we I did a Galilean transformation. So this is uh, this is kind of con confusing to me. Please, if anybody can help me here. Yeah. So I think es essentially. Um, my feeling is that if we write wave equation in the Hamiltonian structure and apply Galileo, it's actually we do a Laurent transformation. Or maybe half a Laurent transformation, anyway. All right, so this is some quote I took from Weinberg's uh, book. It says, if we try to describe the particle using uh, like the photon, then uh, if uh, if it has this form, just like the planar wave, then the fre all these two frequency will transform, uh, just like the Laurent Laurent's uh, transformation. This is quite consistent with our Galilean trans Galilean change of variable. Okay, so uh, I th I think uh, uh sorry I don't uh, uh I think I repeat myself. Let's stop here. Thank you very much.